نحمد صلی اللہ رسول الکریم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیلائٹیڈ ٹو بی ٹاکنگ آن دس سبجیکٹ آف ہاؤ ٹو ٹیک اسلامک فائنانس فرام انیش ٹو مین اسٹریم سیگمنٹ سو لیٹ می اسٹارٹ بائی ٹیکنگ اسٹاک آف ویئر وی آر ٹوڈے اینڈ اینڈ دس از فار اسٹوڈنٹس آف اسلامک فائنانس ہو آر پریپیئرنگ ٹو ٹیک دا انڈسٹری فرام ویئر وی آر ٹوڈے ٹو دا نیکسٹ اسٹیپ رائٹ Now, in, in terms of, uh, we've got to understand a little bit of history. Uh, the history is, you know, the, we are uh, now looking at the third generation of Islamic finance uh, professionals and bankers uh, to take the, in the industry forward. The first generation uh, was all about passion, right? I mean, who believed in Islamic finance as a concept uh, because it was, uh, you know, uh, they were motivated by their religious uh, doctrines. Uh, they didn't have proper knowledge, but still that passion was there. And a, as a result, they were able to put uh, proof of concept in place uh, in, in the form of a number of in institutions. Then we saw uh, the second generation, uh, which are the likes of myself, uh, that, that had the opportunity to study Islamic finance in a little bit more structured manner. And then, uh, uh, you know, our mandate was, okay, how do you establish a credible platform for Islamic finance? And again, uh, that came a long way in terms of a number of the markets and a number of institutions, you know, coming on board. Uh, the responsibility of the next generation, which is the third generation, or I call Generation Z, Gen Z, will be how to integrate Islamic finance in the mainstream Islamic economy, right? And for that, we've got to understand first where we are today. Uh, the overall, the conventional financial asset globally is about $300 trillion today. Uh, the Islamic finance assets, uh, both documented and semi-documented, as of 2016, is about $3 trillion. Right? $2 trillion is a documented one. Another trillion are the pension assets and the Oqaf assets and the high net worth assets, uh, which are really not uh, clearly documented. So overall, $3 trillion. That makes it 1%, right? Uh, if you look at another asset category, which is called principles of uh, responsible investing, Right? That's been endorsed by the United Nation. What you will see is they have put together an industry which is about more than 60 trillion today. And that has really come up in the last decade or so. So really, the message here is the potential is huge. The proof of concept is in place. The potential is huge. And, and therefore, it is important to understand what has gone well and, and what still needs to be developed. So in terms of what has gone well, Uh, you know, so we've got enough formation of financial capital, uh, especially from the Gulf countries, right, who are the net capital exporters. Uh, and we've got uh, strong knowledge communities in, in place now in the likes of, uh, you know, UAE, Bahrain, uh, Saudi, Malaysia, a little bit of Turkey at the moment, and of course, Pakistan. So a good critical mass of those knowledge communities are in place, number one. Number two. Very clearly, Islamic finance is being driven by grassroots demand. So it is not just the supply side push we are, we are seeing. It is also the grassroots demand that we are seeing, both from people who are religiously motivated, but more so people uh, who are driven by ethical or socially responsible banking. Right? And, and therefore, when it is uh, demand driven, uh, you can be assured it's here to stay. Third is, there is good level of international acceptance, uh, not just from regulators, but also from Sharia scholars, uh, uh, bankers, as well as uh, large in, in, institutional players like the IMFs of the world and the World Banks of the world who are saying, you know what, if finance is to progress, uh, especially across emerging markets, then Islamic finance is an important medium, right? So that acceptance is there. And then finally, regulatory basics are in place. And I say basics, the reason is finance world is always evolving. And with the, uh, you know, with, with the advent of fintech, uh, you are now seeing regtech, which is the regulations of the fintech industry. And that will open up a whole new world uh, for Islamic finance as well. But at least the regulatory basics are in place in a number of markets, right? I mean, that, that allow Islamic banks to operate well. So those are the four factors that have gone well. Now, what are the four challenges that we still see uh, as we hand over the industry to Gen Z. Uh, and, and first and foremost is, uh, we've got to go back to the drawing board and talk about, uh, is there clarity of purpose? Uh, why is Islamic finance needed? What is the impact being made? Uh, are the corporates, are the business communities, are the individuals actually seeing the impact of Islamic finance? Or have we only Uh, looked at the form and not the substance yet, and maybe that is the next step. Right? Looking forward, number one. 
Number two, innovation. Uh, what is the banking model of the future going to look like, especially the em emerging markets? It is not enough uh, to simply import the business models from West and say, okay, because it is working in the U.S.s of the world and the U.K.s of the world, therefore it will work in the Egypts of the world and the Turkey of the world and you know Pakistan's of the world, right? We've got very different dynamics, and you need to understand this context and therefore see, you know, you know, again, how the finance is going to evolve going forward. Number three, uh, we've got to transition from a startup play to a growth play. What does that mean? What that means is in the startup phase, you see a lot of institutions mushrooming, and that is what the need is. Going forward, you need to have these institutions gain scale. Right? There are, for example, there are a lot of national players now, be it in the takaful industry or the capital markets or banking. Uh, going forward, the requirement is how do we take it to the next level? You know, forget about global banks. I think it's a little bit too early to talk about that. But how do we build multi-market banks? You know, how do we capture the new trade routes that are that are, that are, that are coming into play, right, through, through the advent of Sharia compliant finance? And finally, how do we how do we replicate the success of Islamic finance in nine of the core markets, uh, which includes Pakistan as well, across the rest of OIC, 50 plus markets there, right? I mean, if you do not have proof of concept in OIC market, it's a little bit too ambitious to start talking that, yes, we can penetrate uh, or we have a proposition for the global world out there. So those are the four key challenges that we need to look at going forward. So uh, for students of finance, I, I'll conclude this segment by saying that proof of concept is in place, a credible ecosystem is in place. Uh, the thought process is what do we need to stop doing and what do we need to start doing in order to take the industry to the next level? Thank you.